in 2015, I went independent, which at the time felt like a brave, bold step. In reality, it was a fantastic choice for me because it gave me the freedom to explore and follow my nose, to explore interesting things. Around that same time in 2015, I moved away from design and research into product management. I started working with Mind the Product, the world's largest product management organization. They put me on stage at their conference at the Barbican. I had an incredible time. Around that same time, I was spending 50% of my time working for big enterprise organizations. I redesigned um, MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in, in New York City. Incredible project to work on. Helped them reduce the lines outside. All kinds of incredible metrics that we worked on as part of that project. And I also started working with startups at that point. You know, the energy and the speed that startups worked at. The thing I noticed about working with startups is often they were, they had a strong vision, but they didn't quite know the route to get there. And I helped them uncover that route, help them with a map to the future. And again, through simple research, process and approach. Real eye-opener for me. About the same time, I created my own startup. And we had a level of success that perhaps, I, well, certainly, I certainly wasn't prepared for. Uh, me and my three co-founders, we all had young kids at the time. And we were designing an app to help busy parents plan and structure their lives around their family and around their work, you know, bringing those two things together, a blend of home and work together. Another tenant of a lot of the stuff that I do now is thinking about life not being a balance or a conflict between home and work, but actually it's a blend. And when it's a blend, it's wonderful. And that was the app that I was creating. Ironically, in my own personal life, there was no blend there. Like I said, my daughter was two. In the background to all of the work I'd be doing at Marriott and being independent, I'd also had a very successful speaking career. I was pretty much a professional speaker at that point. I'd written a book. I'd had a huge amount of success in terms of putting myself out there and generating fantastic work with fantastic clients. Again, I belittle that stuff a little bit. I didn't even mention it till now. Oh yeah, by the way, I was a professional speaker and a professional author. Again, for me at the time, it didn't feel like an important step. It just felt like somebody was pushing me outside of my comfort zone by asking me to be on stage, by asking me to write a book. In retrospect, of course, it was a fantastic move, but it felt very difficult and hard and felt like a real emotional push for me to do that. But I did it and it was fine and it pushed me forward in my career. I mean, it was frightening, don't get me wrong, but it did an incredible, it was an incredible insight into myself about what my motivations were. Of course, my teaching came back to me when I was on stage. It really helped me to feel comfortable up there in front of 2,000 people. And to understand that I was not in control of that. I was not in control of the people's emotions in front of me. All I could do was go up, be up there and put on a great show, which I lovely and I, which was lovely. And I really enjoyed something I love to do is to put on a show. Anyway, back to my startup. We were looking for 1.2 million in seed money and we were very close to doing that. But at the same time, my life was falling apart behind me. I was traveling all the time. My wife's health was getting worse and worse because again, she was solo parenting effectively with a challenging young daughter. Um, and her health was getting worse and worse. And I was just ignoring it, right? No, nope, my career is the most important thing. As long as the mortgage is paid and we've got money in the bank, everything else is fine. Of course, that's not the case, right? My life was falling apart. I was on the cusp of enormous success with this startup. You know, the, it was a billion dollar opportunity and we were having a real, real success with VCs at that point. We were getting some real momentum behind us. But it felt like a time to change for me. I couldn't carry on. So much so, I don't think I really noticed it. I was that, that metaphorical frog in the boiling water. My life was literally on fire and I just didn't see it. I was just focusing on this big goal of being a billionaire, right? As soon as I've got the money, everything will be fine. As soon as we're rich and we're in every, there's money in the bank, I can sort everything else out. I mean, we all know, of course, that's not a sustainable approach. It didn't work for me at the time and it doesn't work with any of the billionaires that I work with now, right? Money, of course, doesn't make you happy, but still we have that belief that money gives us comfort, security, control, all of these things. The reality is, is those, not, those are not the things that make us happy. My wife was smart enough to realize that in me. She gave me an ultimatum, right? Startup or marriage. Of course, I chose marriage. My CEO at the time, Lisa, noticed this in me as well and said, you know, look, you're not happy. Do you really want to be on this journey? And she forced me to make a choice, right? And I'm pleased that she did. Lockdown happened. Everything changed. 